Welcome everybody. Today we're going to go over Streamlabs OBS best settings for streaming and recording. We're just going to go over the settings part. If you enjoy this video and you want to know more, make sure you smack that like button and let me know if you want more and I can go over more of the details, how to set up your scenes, everything like that. I have a lot of other things I can show and let's just see how this video goes. So to start, we're just going to mainly go into settings. So down here on the bottom left, we're going to go ahead and click the cog that says settings. That's going to bring it up to general. Here, this is how I have it set up. Confirm stream title and game before going live. I like to do that to make sure I change the title if I need to or if I'm playing a different game. Navigate to live tab when going live. So the software automatically flips to the live tab once you go live. And that's about it for that. I think everything else is defaults here. Let's go ahead and click on stream. On stream, you want to choose your streaming service. I stream on Mixer, so I have Mixer here. And if you ever want to visit, it's mixer.com slash Kevin Smack. Server, I just have it set up for auto. It'll look for the newest one. And then the stream key, I'll get that from inside the website under the broadcast dashboard, usually where it is, and it's usually hidden. And then you just copy that and you paste that in there. So let's go ahead and choose output. This is going to be more of what you're looking for. And in output mode, we have advanced set. Audio tracks, I just do one. I do have all my audio on different tracks, but I don't record it that way because it just seems more messy. And I just make sure to only use what I need when I'm making a video. So I just use one, but you can use more if you'd like. Encoder, I'm using hardware. NVENC. Basically, if you have a good graphics card, you want to choose this. This will go ahead and help that. If not, you can go ahead and choose Software 264, but beware, uh, Software 264 is going to kind of give your stream that like grainy look. So if you have like your stream and it's grainy, that's because of that. So if you try this, it should work better if your card can handle it. If it can't, you may want to look at upgrading your graphics card. And I keep this checked here. CBR is the best for rate control. Bit rate, I have 6,000. You're gonna wanna go ahead and mess around with that. That is internet dependent. So if you do have a slow internet, you're gonna have to go lower than that. I like to push high quality and I do have a pretty good internet connection majority of the time. So I do keep it at 6,000 there. Keyframe interval, I always keep at two. Preset, I have it at quality right now. I have been thinking about moving it to max quality, but I haven't done that yet. Um, it's up to you where you want to be, but I would think quality is a good starting spot, if not performance, but I think quality is pretty important there. And then this I just keep as default. So now we have other areas. We have recording. We can go in recording. This is set to standard. This is where I save it. I save it as MP4. It makes editing a lot easier. Again, hardware I have set up there. Then we have CBR. Here we have bitrate 30,000. Why? Because the bitrate helps with the quality and this is not internet dependent. So you can kind of push this pretty high. 30,000 is very good quality for me. So I like it there. Uh, preset, you know, we should probably just put that on max quality for this one and profile high. So that is the recording portion. Uh, you have audio as well. You always want to keep these at 160. And I don't use the replay buffer. So let's go audio here. Sample rate, you want to keep this at 48 KHZ. That's the best one. If you're running any kind of software that changes your audio or anything like that, you also want to go ahead and make sure they're all set at 48 KHZ as well. That's for another video. If you're interested, let me know down below. Basically, there's software that can take different items that produce sound and put them in different channels. For example, I have Fortnite in one channel. I have Discord in another channel and I have my music in another channel. That way, when I'm streaming, I can play music and my audience can hear it, but I don't hear it. That way I can hear the sound of the game and make sure I'm concentrating. And with a click of a button, I can start hearing it as well. If I change my mind, I want to listen to the music. So I have a video like that if you want. 
let me know and I'll put it out. It is not an easy video to make, so make sure you really want it. Let me know down below if that's the case. Next, we're gonna go ahead and choose video. Here, I'm at 1920 by 1080. Remember, I do have a strong computer. I have a 1080 Ti, 11 gigs, so it's, it's a strong one here. And then I went this here, link is those. <laughs> Uh, FPS, I run common and 60. So that's that screen there. Hotkeys, I don't really use them. I do have a stream deck, which has a button to just hit and it changes the scenes automatically for me. I feel that works well because I already have so many things on my keyboard. And I have a link for that, an Amazon link down below if you wanna check it out. You can see that it's at the very bottom in the stream deck area. Advanced, we're gonna run process priority above normal because we want this to run above everything else in my eye. It does also put it above the game though, so it's up to you if you wanna sacrifice that. Usually the streaming software doesn't seem like it takes too much out of the computer, so I like to keep it above to make sure it doesn't freeze up or anything like that. So the stream keeps on rolling. Everything else I pretty much just have default settings. I don't think I've changed anything here. Game overlay, we just keep that there. Scene collection, nothing to worry about. Notifications, that's all set up as normal. Same with appearance. Night is what you want. You do not want the day. Here, I'll, I'll show you. Squint your eyes, guys. That's the day. I'll put it back to night. <laughs> I don't know why anyone would even use that. They should make it like a not so bright color. <laughs> you can change the chat text size and everything in that here and enable anything you need to. Face masks. Uh, I don't use that. It's a new feature. There's always new features with Streamlabs OBFs. So they'll go through and enable it. I believe someone tips and then it puts a face over your face. Remote control I can't click on or you'll be able to take control of my stream. <laughs> installed apps, I have Stream Design Factory installed and that's what gives me my overlay. So if you see my overlay here, that is what does that. So basically I go on the computer, I pay $5 a month to them and I can use any of their overlays. So this is the one I'm using. It's not too hard to set up. It's probably not as easy as they say it is, but it's not too hard to set up. If you want a video on that as well, let me know down below. So with these settings, this should get your stream looking crystal clear. It should be very smooth for you. So I really do recommend these and give it a try and I bet you're gonna enjoy them and your stream's gonna run nice. If you have any settings that are different or if you have any questions on any of these features, please let me know down below. And I want to thank you so much for watching. Here's some other videos I think you'll enjoy.